In this video, I'm going to show you how to make beautiful, presentation-worthy tables using the Knitter and Cable Extra packages in R. Now, before you watch this tutorial, though, I do strongly recommend that you watch my R Markdown tutorial. That's where I walk you through, starting from an RMD script in R, where you've got your code, your header, your commentary, and your output all in one location, how you can transform that into a presentation-worthy document that's in a Word document, an HTML, or a PDF format. Well, I mentioned at the end of that tutorial that creating good-looking tables is a subject for its own tutorial, and that's what I'm going to cover for you here today. So if this is your first time here, my name is Richard. This is the channel where we talk about all things data, data science, statistics, and programming. So subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Starting out with our packages. I'm going to start by calling the tidyverse. I do that every time just out of habit. Then our two key packages today are going to be knitter and cable extra. But you are also going to need this tiny text package for certain additional functionality. So specifically, if you want to knit an RMD file to turn that into a PDF document, you are going to need a local installation of LaTeX and you're also going to need this tiny text package. Tiny text, tiny tech, however you want to pronounce that. Then there's certain additional LaTeX formatting options that you can do with your tables directly in your document. If you want those LaTeX formatting options, again, you need LaTeX installed and you need this tiny text package. We're going to demo all of our uh, cable extra and knitter uh, tables in this document on the credit card data set. And the credit card data set comes from the AER package. So then additionally, I'm going to provide you some links to some additional tutorials. Uh, you have a tutorial on Knitter. This Cable Extra vignette comes directly from CRAN. It's awesome. Highly recommend checking that out. Then I'm also going to provide a tutorial uh, linked here in the area in the document for this formatable or format table. Don't know how you pronounce that package. So in this package, you can really take your formatting of tables to the next level. I gotta be honest with this package, I'm not crazy about the syntax to it. And some of the features from this package go so far above and beyond, it's a little bit above what I personally need or want from the tables I wanna create from day to day. But you may enjoy it, so I'll provide the link here in case you wanna check that out. Now, if you've seen my R Markdown tutorial, you already know what the difference is between a regular tibble that you call and a tibble that you pass through the cable function. But I'm going to remind you just in case. I start here by just creating this card head tibble. That's just the first six rows of the credit card data set. I stored it in its own data frame. I call that. Here's what that looks like. But then... It looks very different if you pass this through the cable function. Now, Cable Extra actually provides us some tidyverse syntax for the cable function. Specifically, we can use the pipe operator here, like we do with anything else through the tidyverse. Then we use this KBL function. This has the exact same effect as just wrapping card head inside uh, the cable function, but I personally much prefer using the uh, using the pipe operator. So there's two very different appearances here. Now, I think both of these don't particularly look very great, but there's a lot of customizability that we can do from here. There are various arguments that we can pass to the cable function, and a couple of the most important ones are align and caption. These are both fairly self-explanatory. Align is going to help us align the various columns, whether that's to the left, in the center, or to the right. And caption is going to help us give a, t give a title to the table. So for align here, I'm getting creative with it. I want to align the first seven columns in the center, and I want the next five columns aligned to the right. So I do that by repeating a C. The C tells a cable to align in the center, uh, repeating that seven times, and then R is repeated five times. 
Now you can tell a little bit of a difference between these two tables. Neither of them look particularly great here, but these first seven columns and everything inside the column, so the header and the contents are aligned in the center for the first seven columns, and then the next five columns are aligned to the right. Then we have this nice caption to the table saying cable example with, uh, with car data. Keep in mind though, these are just a couple of the arguments that you can pass to the cable function. And so if you look at the help documentation for a second, notice there's a lot of different arguments to the cable function. So I highly recommend getting familiar with this help documentation. Just like every other important function, if you get familiar with this documentation, it will really be your friend. But you notice from all these different arguments, there is a ton of different configuration that you can get for tables just from this one single function. However, this is just scratching the surface and a lot of that configuration for tables that you're going to be able to get is through different cable extra uh, functionalities. And we're gonna start with cable styling. That is one of the key uh, functions that you wanna know out of cable extra. So the bootstrap options argument to cable styling takes a few different values. The possible options include basic, striped, bordered, hover, condensed, responsive, or none. So let's get a feel for what some of these different things look like. So if we do bootstrap options equals striped, just compare this table to this table. Now what I did was I started with this cable object, which was created through taking that card head table and then using the cable function, aligning seven columns in the center, five columns to the right, and then giving it a caption. That whole thing just gets stored inside its own base object here. But I want you to just compare this table to this table. Like, even if the style of this table isn't necessarily your cup of tea, you have to admit this looks a whole lot better than this table up here does. So again, all I did to do that was just uh, pipe uh, that cable object to the cable styling functions, pass in the function or the argument bootstrap options equals striped. And this looks pretty decent. Now we could do alternatively bootstrap options equal bordered and we've got a difference here. Notice instead of these stripes going through uh, the rows here, we have borders going up and down each row and column. You could do bootstrap options equal hover. That way if we hover over the rows here, we get a, uh, we get a hover effect. You could do bootstrap options equal condensed. This is going to make the table a little bit skinnier. You can do bootstrap options equal responsive. That's another stylistic effect. But it's important to realize these things are not mutually exclusive. So alternatively, we can just put all these things together. We can do striped, bordered, hover, condensed, and responsive, and bam, we have all these effects inside of one table. Notice we have this hover effect. That's my personal favorite. Now there are tons of different ways that we can customize the look and feel of a table other than just cable styling and these options that you saw. So in particular, if you're going to knit PDF documents, you do want to get familiar with using LaTeX options instead of bootstrap options. And it's going to be fairly similar just with some different uh, options that LaTeX options takes instead of bootstrap options. But cable styling isn't even the only uh, function that we can pass to a cable object. So there are other different style functions we can use. Those are cable classic, cable classic two, cable material, cable material dark, cable minimal, and cable paper. So they have key argument light table options, but you can pass the same sorts of cable styling arguments that you could uh, up here to any of these functions. So we're gonna see some examples of those. Along the way, I'm just gonna radically change the look and feel of these different tables. Now, the effect that I'm going for here isn't necessarily for you to be able to see in every specific case what exactly changed, but it's more to give you a feel for how customizable these things are. Because as you go along, you're not gonna perfectly know exactly what kind of table that you wanna create uh, right up front, but knowing all the different functionalities and arguments that you can change is gonna be the most important thing.
So again, I'm going to change uh, the style function that we're using along the way, as well as the font and font size. You can see an example here with Cable Classic, where I'm using light table options equal basic. You have a lot more of an older, classic looking uh, feel uh, to this table. Cable Classic 2 is very similar. Uh, notice here though, uh, you have a different looking header on top of these column names here. Same with this uh, kind of border going on at the bottom here. You can use cable material here. I'm using light table uh, options equal basic, but I'm also configuring the font size and HTML font to sans. This isn't necessarily my favorite, but maybe it is yours. Similarly with cable material dark, I'm not necessarily a big fan of this dark table with white uh, text sort of look and feel, but again, that's something you can do. Notice that I'm making the font size smaller here as opposed to up here. There's cable minimal. I'm using light table options equals striped and HTML font equals uh, Verdana. And then there's cable paper. Do light table options equals striped and HTML font equals Helvetica. Now again, I'm showing you a whole lot of different ways that you can customize a table and there's no one right or wrong way to do this. You're going to have to play around with this a little bit just to, just to get your perfect sort of table. And what the perfect sort of table means is going to depend on your personal preferences or possibly uh, the specifications which are given to you by your client. But of course, the magic doesn't stop there. And if we want to customize individual rows or columns, we have the option to do that too. So we've also got these two wonderful functions, column spec, standing for column specifications, obviously, and row spec. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take columns 8 through 12. So if we count over, we go 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 here, and I'm going to make them bold. As you see, we have regular font on the left side, but then columns 8 through 12, we've made them bold. Now I also want to take rows 4 through 6, we go 4, 5, and 6 here, and make them italic. Now I'm also going to make the background blue for them, and I'm going to make the color of the font gold, and I'm going to put these into italics. So you've got that effect going on, and the effects are not mutually exclusive, as you can see with uh, these uh, cells over here notice that now we've got them both we've got the font both bold and italicized so the possibilities here get pretty endless then we can create groups for our rows and columns as well so we can start by using this awesome pack rows function here now our arguments are going to be starting with the name of the group let's just call it group one for starters and then the starting row and the end row for the group so I want to start at row three, end at row five, and I just want to make that whole uh, grouping of rows green. Notice we've got this nice uh, green title and border here that's green. Similarly, maybe I just want uh, one single row here in group two. So starting position is six, end position is also six, and let's make that red for group two. Now, if I want to create groups for my columns, that's easy enough to do. I can do that using the add header above function. So the syntax here is pretty straightforward. You just specify the names and then the span for those groups. So for instance, I want group one to span four columns. I want group two to span two columns. And I want group three to span six columns. We look down here at the table, we've got, bam, group one is four columns, group two is two columns, and group three is six columns. Now one last thing I'll say about add header above is that you can stack this. So I could pipe add header above to another add header above, maybe if I wanted to put group one and group two into like group four up above, then group three gets its own group five. I know that doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense in this particular example, but that's something I can do. So again, you can stack add header above if you so choose to. Lastly, we can configure the font color and the background of the columns using the column spec function. But the way to do this is a little bit tricky and counterintuitive. 
So how we're going to do this is, let's start with column spec five. We want to customize the font color of this share column here. And we're going to do this by mapping the colors to the values. So essentially, low values get a dark color and high values get a brighter color. The way we do this is by configuring starting and end points for the darkness and for the brightness. So the spectrum here is going to go from 0 to 1. Begin is going to default to 0 and end is going to default to 1. I'm going to set end to 0.7, which is going to tell this I don't want the high values of share to get that bright. So notice a low value here. Take this 0 0.004 here. It's got this dark purple color, whereas end equals 0.7. It's got, we've got 0.067 here, that's the highest value, gets this greenish color here. That's a lot brighter, but it's not too much brighter. However, if we look at what's going on with this expenditure column here, notice in this case, I just want the font color to be a solid white, but I want to map the background color to the values of the expenditure column. However, I'm configuring this a little bit differently. This time I want the beginning to be 0.3 and the end uh, color value to be at 0.8. So look at how this compares. We take a low value, 9.85, and notice it's this purple color, but it's a little bit brighter than the low values of share. In share, look at the font color for 0 0.004 here. It's this really dark purple, whereas this low value 9.85 gets this slightly lighter purple. Now we have the end equals 0.8, meaning we want the high values to have a slightly brighter color than what we had for share here. For share, high value got this green color. For end equals 0.8, we're going to get this uh, orangish color for the high value 546. Now, I personally think, for instance, here, if you set end equals equals one, uh, that this background color would get way too bright. But again, that's just me. You, your, uh, your opinion may vary. Now, taking this a step further, you have this option here, which can take uh, values A, B, C, or D, and that's going to change the entire color palette. So again, you have a ton of different configuration if you want to change the uh, the colors of font or backgrounds for columns. That's all I'm going to show you today for Knitter and for Cable Extra. Not because this is a completely comprehensive tutorial of everything that you can do with these packages, but I think for the overwhelming majority of people, using these basic functions that I've shown you and some of the key arguments and the different options you can pass to those arguments, you are going to be able to create a table with the look and feel that you're going to want. Again, I can't stress enough, just get used to the help documentation and just play around with these different functions. You're going to have to do a little bit of trial and error to get things to look just the way you want, but with a little bit of practice, Knitter and Cable Extra functionality is going to feel like second nature for you. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider sharing it, tap the like button, and then I'll see you all in the not-so-distant future. Until then, Richard, on data.